All right, we are at noon straight up. And so welcome, welcome everyone to another Kuka Rankin Lunch and Learn. It is noon on Wednesday. Every Wednesday at noon, we provide these 20 minute uh, lunchtime webinars that you can come in and learn a few different things. Sometimes there's a little bit of training, sometimes there's a little bit of information. And today we've got Daryl Madison from our Boise store, who's going to be talking about the DJI M30 series uh, aircraft. So without any other comment, Daryl, I'm going to turn it right straight over to you. You have the floor. Thanks, Douglas. Appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, I'm from uh, the Kukarankin Boise store, uh, representing Kukarankin. Um, a little bit about me, I've been flying drones for 10 years, started with the DJI Phantom 1, uh, worked into construction. Uh, I have thousands of hours of uh, experience on the sticks, um, doing utility inspections, construction inspections, and cell phone tower mapping mostly. Um, but enough about me, uh, today we're gonna be talking about the M30. So I have an M30, regular M30 right here. Uh, lots of fun things going on with this drone. Uh, DJI has really pulled out all, all the stops on this one. Uh, from the size to the price point to all the different bells and whistles going on with the drone. So uh, as you can see, I mean, it looks a lot like the, uh, the M300. Uh, it looks like a little bit of uh, a Mavic as well. Um, but the camera system right here uh, has you know, four, four separate cameras. Uh, you have an FPV camera here, you have a wide angle, you have a zoom camera, and you also have a, a, a basically a, a range finder here. Sorry about that. And uh, on the thermal, you'd actually have another thermal uh, camera there. Um, a little bit more, uh, this, this was a good um, improvement that they made from the M300. Uh, the M300 had those sleeves that you would have to lock down. This one just has a little button that pops up and so it locks in place. Uh, there's no gimbal guard for the camera. It just, you, you put it straight up and that locks there so that you can just throw it in the case. Um, the battery compartments in the back have a little tabs so that when you slide a battery in, uh, they lock into, lock into position and they don't come out, makes it uh, really easy and convenient to hot swap your batteries uh, one at a time. You don't have to uh, flip the switch and then hold the battery as you're pulling the batteries out, which is definitely a plus. Um, as you can see, it doesn't have a landing gear. So once you uh, extend the arms, it, it sits on the back legs here and sits on the front antenna here. Uh, which is pretty convenient. Uh, they really thought about this for first responders, and I mean, it's not really a hobbyist drone, but uh, you know, definitely an all around one of the best drones uh, that DJI's made to date. Uh, I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen to do a little bit of a slideshow. We've right. Got your, we've got your PowerPoint view. There you go, Daryl. Now we've got your, your studio view. Perfect. Okay. So DJI came out with uh, three different platforms for the M30. You got the M30, which is no thermal, the M30T, which has a thermal, and also the M30 docking station, uh, which we'll get into a little bit more, but it's got uh, fully automation uh, coming soon in October. Uh, Bad thing about that is if you purchase an M30 or an M30T, it will not be compatible with the docking station. You'll have to purchase the docking station, uh, drone and docking station at the same time. Uh, but that's a really cool feature. DJI, as I said, pulled out a lot of the stops. Uh, really excited to share all the, the different functions with you guys now. Uh, these are some of the basic questions that most of the newbies uh, ask just to kind of get an idea of, you know, some of the different ratings and stuff. Uh, 40 minute, 41 minute flight time. Uh, you got 33 mile per hour wind resistance, uh, which is, you know, pretty high. Almost 23,000 feet foot service ceiling. So you can fly up in the high mountains. Uh, they do make some high altitude props with this. 
uh, 52 mile per hour max speed. It's got an IP55 rating, which is the most weather weather resistant drone to date. So IP55 for the drone, IP45 for the remote control. Uh, uses OcuSync 3 transmission. Uh, it's got a nine mile transmission uh, signal. So uh, really cool. Doing a lot of different things with that right now, um, but more in the works. Uh, it's super lightweight and portable. Uh, fastest drone to ever be deployed, I think, in, in under one minute for this size of drone. Um, it's got a four antenna design on the remote controller. So um, it, it has a lot of redundancy features, uh, including the emergency three prop landing. So if you have a propeller go out, uh, the drone will actually land uh, using three props. Data encryption and one, uh, one button delete uh, for, the, for your data that you're capturing. So if you're trying to keep things confidential and not shared, you also have the ability to uh, go into a more of a private mode on the uh, on BRC so that you won't be broadcasting anything over Wi-Fi and um, you'll be able to just you know keep everything on a memory card. Uh, and as I said, it's got a case to air deployment in under one minute, making it uh, perfect for you know first responders and, and, and the like. Um, some of the other features going on, obviously the M30T, the, uh, looks, looks a lot like the M30T, uh, the, the M30 camera system. Uh, some of the key features you got, you have, uh, improved FPV, FPV camera, uh, for low light operations. That, that, that was a big one for me too, because even though, um, you know, you're not really using the FPV for photos or anything like that, it's always good to have a backup to see in those low light conditions, you know, operations, keeping operations safe. Uh, 48 megapixel half inch CMOS sensor, opposed to a 20 megapixel CMOS sensor on the H20. Um, that's gonna be a, a really different resolution uh, and, and much more pixels on that. Video resolution on the wide angle camera. Uh, I think you get 4K 30 frames per second versus the 1080 30 frames per second. Um, and optical zoom opposed to hybrid optical zoom. So 16 times optical zoom on this M30. Uh, you had 20 times optical zoom on the H20, uh, but it was a hybrid optical zoom. So if you had a lot of experience on the H20, you would see a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of things that were being introduced uh, post zoom and the colors were getting messed up and stuff like that. It wasn't very good for inspection quality stuff, um, but still great camera. Um, laser range finder up to 1200 meters. So uh, that, that's actually a really cool feature that we can get into later. Uh, PSDK integration. So what you see there on top of the drone, is a, basically a little mount that you can mount spotlights, loudspeakers, gas detectors, parachutes, um, and there's a whole lot more third-party uh, integration coming in. Um, that's what PSDK is. It's basically DJI is working with third-party vendors to make and create new things that you can attach to the top of the, the drone to make it uh, a little safer or you know, more functional. Uh, omnidirectional obstacle avoidance. Uh, there's six-sided obstacle avoidance. You have 24 sensors on this, uh, 12 of them being a vision sensor, and then 12 of them being uh, the obstacle sensors that, that use basically sonar to kind of see where the drone's going. It's got braking system, uh, top, bottom, front, back, left, right. Um, and yeah, it's, it's what we come to know and love with the DJI aircraft. Uh, a little bit about the battery system and the case. So each battery uh, supports self-heating cold environments. 
Uh, you can go from negative four all the way up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you also have 400 charge cycles uh, for the lifespan of the battery, opposed to the 200 that was on the TB60s for the uh, M300 series. Uh, the BS30 Intelligent Battery Station uh, has improved uh, from the M300 as well. Um, you, if you've ever had the M300 Battery Station, you know that uh, you plug some batteries in and it will charge basically whatever two batteries it wants to. This one actually charges laterally. So you can uh, pop the two batteries in and it will charge uh, basically port one, port two, port three, or port four. So you can plug eight of these uh, TB30s in and uh, two WB37s for the remote control. And also uh, you can charge your RC plus remote control all at the same time. Uh, one set of TB30s, one WB37 and the remote control at the same time, which is nice. Um, and that has actually multiple charging modes. So you have a standard mode, uh, 50 minutes from zero to 100%. Most of the time, you're not running down to 0% anyways. Uh, you're typically, you know, landing the drone at about 20% of the battery. So um, the ready to fly mode, which is, you know, you can pretty much get by with two sets of batteries uh, and just continuous flying and ready to fly. The, with the uh, battery flight time being 41 minutes and the ready to fly mode being 30 minutes from 20 to 90%, you can basically land, swap, hot swap the batteries without turning off the drone, be back up in the air and charging up the other set of batteries uh, and just keep that continuously going. Storage mode, uh, always a good idea if you're planning, not planning on flying a drone for five to 10 days uh, to charge and keep your batteries at 50%. The remote control is a big new one. Um, there's a lot of problems with the M300's remote control. This is actually going to be an option for the M300 as well. Uh, so they haven't quite released that yet, but uh, they said towards the end of this year, they will have a new software update for the M300. So if you want to go ahead and and buy this DJI Smart Remote, uh, it would be compatible. Uh, like I said, it's an IP45 rating. Uh, you could fly this thing in torrential downpours and it's, it's not gonna ruin anything. The screen is fantastic. Uh, it's, it's one of the brightest screens that they make to date. Uh, the ergonomics of the remote fits perfectly in my hand. Um, as you can see him flipping around, I mean, you've got, you have a lot of the different buttons on the L1, R1s, and then there's three buttons on the back, as well as a compartment for a 4G uh, SIM card, and also a compartment to hot swap your WB37 batteries so that you won't have to turn off the remote. Um, <clears throat> the DJI dock is really a big one too. This was kind of groundbreaking. Um, you know, back in the day, flying, we always wondered when everything's going to get autonomous. You know, it's right around the corner, and obviously it's here. So the DJ, DJI Dock is the first of its kind drone in the box solution. Uh, it's going to charge wirelessly. You won't have to take it out of the batteries. You won't be able to deploy quickly and fly autonomously. You'll be able to stagger the docking stations for long, longer flights. So if you have, uh, if you're doing utility inspection or this would be great for mining or construction sites. You can set it up on the computer and it will basically land in the, in the dock. It'll charge up and when it's ready to go again, it'll, uh, you can set the waypoints and uh, off it goes for you know, whatever time that you predetermined and set up. So that's a really cool function. Uh, also, you know, if, you're, if you have multiple docking stations, uh, you can set this thing up nine miles away, uh, have one docking station just, or, or three docking stations, and then, you know, launch from station one, land in station two, recharge, launch from station two, land in station three, recharge, and then do it vice versa later on in the day or, or uh, the next day or whatever you choose. This is a little bit about, um, 
I didn't really get too much into the uh, how to set up the missions, uh, but if you guys have any interest in, in a DJI station, we are taking pre-orders. And uh, you can also call any of us at the Cooper Rankin. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about it a little bit more. It's just a little bit too much in-depth information to kind of get into today. But as you can see in that top screen, uh, you know, he's setting up waypoints and, and going to document uh, key points of, of the job site so that he can turn around and do inspections uh, on his computer, you know, without ever having to leave the office, which is um, a big key point. Uh, DJI Flood Hub 2, this is a brand new software system that comes standard with the DJI M30. Uh, it's an all-in-one cloud-based drone operations management platform that is unrivaled and unpaired with anything out there, really. I mean, what they did here was just, it's its a really brilliant piece of software. Uh, it includes innovative mapping features, live annotation, cross-device cross compat compatibility uh, to improve the visibility and usability of drone data. Uh, it's crucial for situational awareness and, and real-time team-wide communication. So you could be out in the field and have something come up and you can be able to uh, issue new missions or uh, alert team members out in the field uh, to some of the changes just so that they can you know, have better situational awareness of what's going on throughout the day. Um, you can use it for route planning, mission management, data storage. Uh, there's live annotation across all platforms. This is also good for uh, first responders. You can typically look into uh, and drop a pen. If you can see the yellow diamond that he's dropping right there, that's kind of a point of interest. And you can share that point of interest for search and rescue missions. Uh, and this is also uh, compatible across multiple devices, not just DJI devices, but you can use it for any Android device, tablet, uh, iPhone, iPad, uh, so that you know people, you don't have to buy service for every single piece of equipment out there. You can use your cell phone if that's what you bought. Um, monitor your fleet from the office, make sure all operations are going smooth. Uh, like I said, in that, in that picture there, he's kind of dropping a pin for the search and rescue mission. Uh, you can see battery status of, of all your different fleet. Uh, you're able to live stream with camera sees for better oversight. So with the hockey scene, you're, you're able to kind of tap into the camera and kind of monitor what your pilot's doing. Um, or share that with a, with a customer doing an inspection, uh, utility inspection, or the like. Uh, this platform is ideal for public safety, search and rescue, and inspection operations. You're able to see 2D mapping of flight operations, know exactly where your aircraft are at all times. So it'll be little, little pinpoints on the map all over the place, um, you know, GIS. And if you're able to break down mapping or yeah, it's fully integrated with all your other setups. Uh, gives you the ability to coordinate the plane mission, missions for field crews on the fly. Uh, plan a waypoint mission on a computer and transfer it directly to the drone in near immediate time. And this isn't, well, DJI Flight Hub 2 is compatible with DJI M30 series, M300 series, and the DJI docking station. Uh, right now it's released uh, on a public beta, uh, so testing phase until October. And we aren't really sure exactly what it's gonna cost after that, but uh, really cool, a lot of, a lot of different bells and whistles to this little program uh, that answers a lot of needs for the different client base that's, that's out there at the Jag. On this drone, they really listen to some of the needs and pain points of uh, a lot of the customers. Uh, like I said, it connects to computers, phones. Uh, it will notify each pilot that has the remote in their hand. Uh, you can connect multiple users or many drone operations simultaneously and keep teams updated with the latest developments uh, thanks to low latency, high resolution live streaming. Synchronized valuable information such as teams' positions, uh, drone status, mission details, and more real time and across multiple device types. 
making team collaboration easier than ever. So that's that's a huge one in the in the construction field as well as you know in the utility inspections. You know, it's going to be it's going to be a game changer, and uh, I'm really excited, and, and I'm pushing this like crazy. Uh, people are really eating it up. Fire departments, police departments, uh, the thermal imaging is amazing. Uh, it's got a radiometric thermal on all of them, so. 640 by, or yeah, 640 by 540 uh, T. Um, if you want more information, give me a call. I'm Joe Madison, T08270923, or stop by any of our Cooper Ranking locations. Outstanding. Well, Gerald, that's all the questions that we have, uh, at least in the chat list here. For those that have, have shown up and spent the time with us this afternoon and, and learned a little bit about the M30 series from Daryl, thanks for joining us. Next week, we will be live at the Com UAV Expo, so uh, you'll be able to catch us live in booth 135 at the Commercial UAV Expo, the largest drone show in, uh, in the continental United States, and we look forward to seeing you from that show live. But until then, a, a huge thank you to Daryl, and uh, we are Cooper Rankin. Please check out our website at cooperrankin.com, and be sure to be aware of our roadshow that leads off from Seattle on October 3rd. Until then, uh, I'm Douglas Spotted Eagle for Cooper Rankin, wishing you a great week. Take care, everyone.